day brings new opportunities. And I was ready to make a statement. How does the saying go? I am Hear me roar. Today, we're learning English with Disney's newest movie, Cruella. Maybe you remember watching 101 Dalmatians as a kid, or even the 1996 live action movie starring Glenn Close. Well, this time, the evil villain is played by the Oscar winning actress Emma Stone. Interestingly, Emma Stone is an American actress but speaks with a British accent in this movie. So get ready to learn about connected speech, some new vocabulary, phrases and more. Because every week we help you to learn English without getting lost, without missing the jokes and without subtitles. Just like Rania, who is a new subscriber of only one week and already says that our channel is by far the best to learn with on YouTube. So to join Rania and our community of over 4 million learners, hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. At the very beginning, I realized I saw the world differently than everyone else. That didn't sit well with some people. But I wasn't for everyone. I guess they were always scared that I'd be a psycho. But a new day brings new opportunities. And I was ready to make a statement. How does the saying go? I am woman, hear me roar. I'm just getting started, darling. thing is, I was born brilliant, born bad, and a little bit mad. <laughs> I realized I saw the world differently than everyone else. That didn't sit well with some people. If something that someone does or says doesn't sit well with you, you do not agree with it or do not like it. Well, as you can imagine, that didn't sit too well with the captain. <laughs> that didn't sit too well with the captain at all. Tell him what Barbosa did. I'm telling a story! But I wasn't for everyone. I guess they were always scared that I'd be a psycho. Psycho is short for psychotic and is another way to say crazy or mad. Also, a person who's considered a psycho might behave in a violent or strange way. Villains in movies often depict a psycho, so a good example of this would be the Joker in The Dark Knight or Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. We also use this word as psyched, but when we say we're psyched to do something, what we mean is that we're excited and full of anticipation. Okay, I'm psyched about this, but if I'm gonna mentor you, I need to know you're psyched about this too. Oh, I am. I'm, I'm psyched. Yeah, but it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to show it. Show it. <laughs> I'm psyched! What's that? But a new day brings new opportunities. I'm sorry now. And I was ready to make a statement. A statement is something that you state, which means to say. The collocation to make a statement means to show people what you think or believe by behaving in a particular way. What the hell happened out there? I will fix it. You said that before. 
I wanted to make a statement. Now the whole goddamn world knows we can't protect them. How does the saying go? A saying is a short statement or sentence that people say and that often expresses an idea that people think is wise. Very common sayings that you might have heard are, a picture is worth a thousand words, or actions speak louder than words. Now, notice she didn't ask about the saying, like, what does the saying say, or how's the saying? She used the verb go. When we use go in this context, we talk about what a saying, song, story, etc. consists of. If we say, how does the song go, we want to know the lyrics of the song. Example, as the song by the Beatles goes, let it be, let it be. The saying Cruella is asking about is I am woman, hear me roar. Which is a song that has become something that people sometimes say. I am woman, hear me roar. In the roar is the noise that a lion or a similar animal or creature makes. This saying as a whole is used as a phrase of encouragement, meaning it's something that reminds women that anything is possible. I'm just getting started, darling. The thing is, I was born brilliant. We use the expression, the thing is, when we are going to explain something, give the reason for something, or give an opinion. Example, the thing is, the shops close early on Sundays. Then she says, I was born brilliant, which means extremely clever or skillful. Do you think the moms will get along? I don't know, they're pretty different. Maybe they'll be best friends. One of them is brilliant, one is sweet and simple. Sound familiar? How would you like to develop confidence in your speaking whilst having real life conversations at the touch of a button when connecting with other learners from all around the world? Sounds like a dream, right? Well now, with the Real Life app, we've made it a reality. You can download the app for free and improve your listening and speaking whenever and wherever you want. Just click the link in the description down below or you can simply search for the Real Life English app in the Google Play or Apple App Store now. Download it now and let us guide you beyond the classroom to live and learn and speak English in the real world. Do you have a light? <laughs> Playing the two sides of Cruella Estella and Cruella. Um, it, it has, it's been, it's been really interesting. It's also been interesting to kind of gauge the tone and how different they are. It's one thing to read it on the page, but it's another to really try to do it day in and day out. How much of Cruella is in Estella and how much of Estella is in Cruella. But I think it's kind of fantastic because it's the personification of those two sides of her hair. You know, there's kind of like the dark and the light. But one of the great things I think about the way that Estella the, the original Cruella is written is that she's not, if she's the white, she's not like this pure, sweet, um, kind of unattainably, you know, perfect creature. She's full of vim and vigor and she's feisty and smart and is a con artist. So she definitely has um, a lot of personality, which I love. Creative. Of a light. There are a few features of connected speech that we can learn from in this sentence. First, this sentence contains assimilation. The you changes how it sounds when it's linked with do. So do and you become do you. But that's not it. Have gets reduced to of and linked to the aforementioned do you. Altogether, this sounds like do you of. Listen to it one more time, then try to say it yourself. Do you have a light? Playing the two sides of Cruella, Estella and Cruella. 
Emma's character's full name is Cruella de Vil, which is a pun or a play on the words cruel and devil. So she's cruel because she enjoys making people suffer or feel unhappy. She's a cruel devil, meaning she's a person who does cruel or evil things. We often collocate devil after an adjective that specifies a bad trait in someone's character. Example, she's a lying devil, so be careful. The caterer said she was saving the truffles for tomorrow, you sneaky devil. <laughs> well, hey, I managed to sneak one right past her. It's been really interesting. It's also been interesting to kind of gauge the tone and how different they are. As used in this context, to gauge means to estimate, judge, or figure out something. When you reassure someone, they have to receive it. You have to gauge whether they actually are reassured. You understand? It's one thing to read it on the page, but it's another to really try to do it day in and day out. We recently learned the expression, the thing is, which we use when we want to explain something. When we want to compare two things, we say first, it's one thing, and then, but it's another. The second thing we're comparing is more important, serious, difficult, etc. than the first. It's one thing to believe in sacrifice, it's another thing to live with it. It's one thing to defend the Fourth Amendment, it's another thing to develop technology so impenetrable that it locks out the state's ability to investigate with probable cause. Get in the Notice how she shortens the expression and only says but here. It's one thing to make yourself miserable, but you're making everyone around you miserable too. Then she says to do something day in and day out, meaning continuously or repeatedly over a long period of time. Don't worry about it, it's the subway. It does that to some people. Does what? It wears you down. It stinks, it's hot, it's crowded. Every day the same thing, day in and day out. But once I get on a stage tonight, all my troubles are going to be fixed. If she's the white, she's not like this pure, sweet, um, kind of unattainably, you know. A sweet person is kind, gentle, and friendly. Well, this is awkward. It's not awkward. I like your company. You're sweet. If something is unattainable, it can't be done. For example, you could say a dream or aspiration is unattainable. Here, she uses the verb for this word, unattainably. I'm not saying your dreams are unattainable, but you can pursue them while you're still gainfully employed here at the 99. What's the rush to turn your back on stability in a pager? Both these words come from the verb to attain, which is a more formal alternative to achieve or accomplish. Dwight was the top salesman of the year at our company. He wins a little prize money and gets honored at some convention. It is literally the highest possible honor that a Northeastern Pennsylvania-based mid-sized paper company regional salesman can attain, so. If she's the white, she's not like this pure, sweet, um, kind of, unattainably, you know, perfect creature. She's full of vim and vigor and she's feisty and smart and is a con artist. So she definitely has um, a lot of personality, which I love. Vim and vigor is an old fashioned way to say someone has a lot of energy. Feisty means having a strong, determined character and being willing to argue with people. And you know something about LexCorp medals, don't you, Miss Lane? I've proven what you've done. Wow, you're feisty. Unfortunately, that will blow away like sand in the desert. You're psychotic. Finally, a con artist is someone who tricks or deceives people in order to get money from them. I'm an abstract expressionist. No, you're a con artist, and I'm a guy that's out 20 bucks. Ugh, whatever. If you're enjoying this lesson, you should check out this lesson we made with Disney's Cinderella. I'll link it down in the description box below so that you can watch it next. Also, don't forget to give this lesson a like if you haven't already and subscribe so that you're notified when we have a new lesson. Now, it's time to watch without subtitles and test your knowledge. Good luck! From the very beginning, I realized I saw the world differently than everyone else. That didn't sit well with some people. 
But I wasn't for everyone. I guess they were always scared that I'd be a psycho. But a new day brings new opportunities. And I was ready to make a statement. Same girl. I am woman. Hear me roar. I'm just getting started, darling. The thing is, I was born brilliant. Born bad. And a little bit mad. <laughs> I'm Cruella. Do you have a light? <laughs> Playing the two sides of Cruella, Estella and Cruella, um, it, it has, it's been, it's been really interesting. It's also been interesting to kind of gauge the tone and how different they are. It's one thing to read it on the page, but it's another to really try to do it day in and day out. How much of how much of Cruella is in Estella and how much of Estella is in Cruella. But I think it's kind of fantastic because it's the personification of those two sides of her hair. You know, there's kind of like the dark and the light. But one of the great things I think about the way that Estella, the, the original Cruella is written is that she's not, if she's the white, she's not like this pure, sweet, um, kind of unattainably, perfect creature. She's full of vim and vigor and she's feisty and smart and is a con artist. So she definitely has um, a lot of personality, which I love. I don't even want to meet the prince. Oh, and you won't. Because there's no question if you're going. But all of the maidens of the land are invited by order of the king. It is the king I'm thinking of. It would be an insult to the royal personage to take you to the palace dressed in these old rags.